Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing pediatric outcome measures with an emphasis on when to use each one based on the age range that it's valid and also whether or not it's a norm or criterion reference test. Okay, so down here I've got this key. So the tests that I have in blue are norm referenced. Norm reference tests are usually used to determine qualifications for things like special education in schools. The criterion reference tests are here in purple and they're used to track progress. What that means is it's just for one kid, you give a pre-test score, and then you do an intervention over a period of time, and then you get a post-test score. And you have two scores, and that way you can track their progress over time or over that intervention. Um, and you can give multiple ones, so it doesn't have to be two. It could be three, four, five, and so on and so forth. And it just allows you to see one child's progress over time. So now, the first five outcome measures that we have here are the norm reference tests. So if you have any question about determining a child's qualifications or eligibility for special education, those key words, it's got to be a norm reference standard. Okay? These other ones down here you could definitely use in the clinic to track progress, but for determining eligibility, it's got to be a norm reference standard. Okay? The first one here is the test of infant motor performance or the TIMP. As you can imagine, it's a preterm infant assessment. Now, in order to be premature, a baby has to be born before 36 weeks gestation. Okay? A full-term baby would be about 40 weeks gestation. So 34 weeks gestation is six weeks earlier than full-term, and it's two weeks earlier than the cutoff value for premature. So clearly, in order to use the TIMP, the baby has to be born premature. And you could start using it once they are 34 weeks gestation, and you can use it up to four months after they're born. The key is, though, they have to be born prematurely. And so the population validity is that they have to be preterm. And the TIMP is just used to assess general motor function. We'll be looking at this picture a lot. But the TIMP, you can see 34 weeks gestation, so premature, all the way up to four months after birth, so four months chronological age. So we have four more outcome measures here, two through five. This one is the Alberta Infant Motor Scale, or AIMS, also norm referenced. It's used to assess motor delay, and it can be administered on a child who's 40 weeks gestation, so basically birth, up to about 18 months after birth. Okay? Um, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to administer, and it assesses motor function in all four of these positions, so prone, supine, sitting, and standing. The next one is the Bailey Scales of Infant and Toddler Development. For obvious reasons, it's usually just called the Bailey, and anyone in this field will know what that is. It's a comprehensive developmental assessment, meaning it assesses more than just motor, as we'll see, uh, and just generally it assesses developmental delay. The age range over which it's valid is 16 days after birth, so not right at birth, but 16 days after, up to 42 months. And depending on a lot of factors, it can take anywhere from 25 minutes to an hour to administer. Like I said, it looks at motor, but it also looks at all these other things. So cognitive, language, social, emotional, adaptive behavior. And because it assesses so much, the Bailey is often considered the gold standard of all of these norm reference tests. So this one's the gold standard. The next one is the Peabody Developmental Motor Scale, which is abbreviated to just Peabody for short. It looks at motor function and estimates motor competence by looking at both gross and fine motor skills. The age range over which it's valid is birth to five years, and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to administer. For gross motor skills, it looks at reflexes, stationary skills, locomotion, object manipulation. For fine motor skills, it looks at grasping, visual integration. The major downside to the Peabody is that uh, it's very expensive. The next one here is the Brunix Ozaretsky Test of Motor Proficiency 2. For obvious reasons, it's abbreviated BOT2. And it's a test of motor function looking at both gross and fine motor skills, as you can see there. Its age range over which it's valid is 4 years to 21 years. Okay? We can get an appreciation here of the age ranges. So here's our Alberta Infant Motor Scale. This is valid basically from birth to 18 months. 
Remember that Bailey is our gold standard because it looks overall at developmental delay. So not just motor, but also cognitive things and so forth. It's from 16 days, so right after birth, to about three and a half years, which is about 42 months. And the Peabody is valid from birth up to five years. And then the BOT2 is valid from four years up to 21 years old. Now let's take a look at the criterion reference tests. So these you would not use to determine qualifications and eligibility for special ed. These would just be used in the clinic to track progress. And the two are the gross motor function measure, or GMFM, and the SFA, or school functional assessment. You can imagine this is done in the school. Let's actually cover that one first. So the SFA is school-based function. It's looking specifically how the child performs in school. As you could imagine, being based in school, it's really based off of the child's grade that they are in school, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, right, which is loosely related to the age. And overall, the age range over which it's valid is kindergarten through grade six. You can see over here that the school functional assessment incorporates family goals, but also performance in the school setting, okay? But it is not used to determine qualifications, it's only to track progress. And then we have the gross motor function measure, and there's actually two forms of it. Well, there are others. The major two are the 88 and the 66. The number here refers to the number of test items in the test. Okay, so the GMFM 88 has 88 test items. And as you can imagine, based on the name, it's not looking at fine motor skills. It's only looking at gross motor skills. And they take about 45 minutes to 60 minutes to administer. Now, for the population validity, you'll often hear that the 88 is valid for both cerebral palsy and Down syndrome, and the 66 is only valid for CP. Okay? Now, to be clear on this population validity, this does not mean that you can only use the 88 for CP and Down syndrome. You can use this in anything. So if a child came in with Krudisha, you could still use this test on that. Just know that there's not validated statistics on children with Krudisha. Okay, it's been extensively studied with CP and Down syndrome, and so you can reference those statistics uh, for that condition. Uh, but you can use it for any child to track progress. You can even use it on uh, typically developing children up to about the age of five. But for individuals with cerebral palsy and Down syndrome, the valid age range is five months to 16 years old. Take a look at this again. So now we'll look at these just to compare those age ranges one more time. So gross motor function measure for individuals with CP and Down syndrome, it's valid from about five months all the way up to about 16 years. And then the school functional assessment from kindergarten to about sixth grade, that's gonna correlate with about five years old to 12 years. But again, remember that the school functional assessment is based on where the child is in school, not necessarily their age. It's based on the grade, which is loosely related to the age. The last one we'll look at is the PDCAT, or the Pediatric Evaluation of Disability Inventory. This is actually both norm and criterion referenced, and it basically looks at functional capabilities. So things like self-care, mobility, social function assessing for functional skill, caregiver assistance, and any modifications. The age range of the PDCAT is really anywhere from birth up to 20 years old, and it takes about 45 minutes to 60 minutes to administer, and so obviously this one is also age-based. So again, one more of these, just going down to the last one, the PDCAT, again valid from birth up to about 20 years of age. So hopefully this video will give you a good understanding about how to determine which pediatric outcome measure to use based on the age range and also what your goal is, whether it's tracking progress or determining eligibility for special services. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.